Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Emily Blunt musical moments. What was that? Was that me? My Something heart's else like, you, you know, it makes me sweat singing understand. in front of people. I it makes my understand. palms just I've... sweat. I knew I couldn't possibly. D flat major. For this list, we'll be looking at any time that this actress showed off her impressive vocal cords. Which Emily Blunt musical moment is your number one? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Surprise Backstreet Boys Performance, The Ellen DeGeneres Show It's no secret that Emily Blunt can sing, but performing in a movie musical and performing in front of a live audience are two very different stories. Well, at least for this actress. She confessed to Ellen that she still gets jitters at the very thought of singing live. I think it's still not a natural thing for me. I find it very nerve-wracking to sing in front of people." Of course, this didn't deter Ellen in the slightest, and she pointed Blunt toward the microphone. She didn't expect the actress to perform alone, though, revealing a surprise appearance from the Backstreet Boys. Now I can do it! Now I can do it! Now I, 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 now I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. Singing their 1999 hit, I Want It That Way, Blunt got to live out the dreams of countless Backstreet Boys loving fans. I never wanna hear you say, I want it that way. Number 9. Rosemary Sings an Irish Folk Song, Wild Mountain Time. In 2020, Blunt starred as Rosemary, a star crossed lover embroiled in a dispute over land. Although the movie flopped, Blunt left her mark with a heartfelt Irish folk song. Uh, my neighbor, Mary Riley, may she rest easy in heaven, she sang this song into the ground, and uh, when she passed, it was like the birds lost their voices. So I'll sing it now to remember her. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, she divulged that it wasn't singing in an Irish accent that left her particularly nervous. It was actually having to sing to her icon, Christopher Walken. And I'll cover it over with the flowers on the mountain. Will you go, Lassie, go? The emotional song serves to pull on the heartstrings of Watkins' Tony Riley and remind him about love. In this scene, Tony wells up as he listens to Rosemary's rendition. If my true love he were gone, I would surely find another to pull wild mountain time. However, gazing into Watkins' piercing eyes, Blunt found herself feeling rather affected as well. Number 8. Moments in the Woods – Into the Woods Cinderella tells the baker's wife about a very nice prince she met at the festival. But soon, we discover that he isn't so nice after all. His philandering ways assert themselves when he crosses paths with the baker's wife and they share a kiss. This leaves her confused and conflicted between the excitement of the moment and her duty to her sensible married life. Was it wrong? Am I mad? Is that all? Does he miss me? Was he suddenly getting bored with me? Wake up! As in so many musicals, the song helped lead her to an epiphany. And as traditionally seen in fairy tales, the story only ends once the morals have been learned. Just a moment. One peculiar passing moment. Must it all be either less or more, either plain or grand? Is it always or is it never and? In this song, the baker's wife learns her lesson, neatly wrapping up her plotline. When you're back to or makes the or mean more than it did before. Now I understand. Well, actually, her story then ends rather abruptly. Number 7. Lip Sync Battle Against Anne Hathaway Lip Sync Battle Who among us wasn't excited to see the Devil Wears Prada co-stars reunite for a lip sync battle? Blunt was up first, nailing her performance of No Diggity. What you know about me? Now don't put my her lip sync skills are on fire, she grinds up on Anne Hathaway, and even gets the entire audience involved. Doesn't really 
really get much better than that, does it? Oh wait, yes it does. For her second round, she emerged in full hippie gear, handing out flowers to the audience, while lip-syncing along to Janis Joplin's Take Another Little Piece of My Heart. You know you got it. Sure that makes you feel her performances were sensational, but Hathaway came in like a wrecking ball and took the win. Number 6. Can you imagine that? Mary Poppins Returns John and Annabelle are apprehensive about their new nanny, but she finds a very compelling way to win them over. I suspect, and I'm never incorrect, that you're far too old to give in to imagination. No, not yet. This song reminds us that you're never too old to engage with your imagination. Just like Julie Andrews' Mary made chores exciting with a spoonful of sugar, Blunt's Mary turns bath time into a magical and fantastical adventure. The monster wind adventure calls, can you imagine that? And sail straight over waterfalls, can you imagine that? Her performance is full of nostalgia for fans of the original 1964 movie, yet she still puts her own stamp on the role as well. What really stands out is how she captures the wonder and excitement that's continued to captivate new fans for generations. So, perhaps we've learnt when day is done some stuff and nonsense could be fun! Number 5 her musical apology to Chris Martin, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. After Chris Martin divulged that his idea for A Quiet Place the musical was snubbed by the actress and her husband, John Krasinski responded by identifying Emily as the source of the communication lapse. I mean, yeah. look at that. Yeah. I think taking full advantage that I'm not on social media, he just threw me under the bus and he did see the video, by the way. So when she appeared on Ellen a few weeks later, she decided to set the record straight and apologize for the misunderstanding. You're gonna do something to make it up. Well, I just, it's sort of a way of me begging forgiveness. Um, Chris, I love you. Always have, always will, and I'm very sorry. And this is a massive sacrifice because I literally loathe singing in front of people, so. And what better way to do so than in song form on national television? As we know, Blunt isn't a fan of live performances, but we guess the punishment had to fit the crime. How long did you wait for us? Chris, my husband threw me under the bus. Singing to Coldplay's In My Place, she finally gave the singer a long overdue and very memorable apology. Number 4. It Takes Two Into the Woods This adorable duet is sung by the baker and his wife as they acknowledge a shift in their relationship. At home I'd fear we'd stay the same forever and then out here your passion, a charming, consider a clever. It takes one. The song mirrors an earlier number as they continue on their quest to break the witch's curse. Only this time, they acknowledge that they have to work as a team to succeed. It's no fun, but what needs to be done you can do when there's two of you. Blunt has wonderful chemistry with James Corden, which only makes their story more compelling. It's also really sweet how the song ends with them giggling together as they finally become a family unit. We want four, we had none, we've got three. We need one, it takes two. <laughs> the song has quite a simple and soft melody, but it's Blunt's acting that makes it one of the movie's highlights. Number 3. The Place Where Lost Things Go Mary Poppins Returns If you found yourself getting teary-eyed during this number, you're not alone. The actress confessed that this was a particularly emotional piece for her as well, and she initially struggled to get through it. Do you ever dream or reminisce Wondering where to find what you truly miss Acting as the central ballad of the movie, Mary sings this song to comfort the children who are missing their mother, who died before the film's events. Nothing's gone forever, only out of place. Blunt felt particularly proud of this number as it showed how in touch Mary is with the children's needs. She also hoped it would reach out to other children dealing with loss and help them find a glimmer of hope too. Trust she's always there. Watching as you grow, find her in the place where the lost things go.
Number 2. 22 Musicals in 12 Minutes – The Late Late Show with James Corden Do you love musical theater and have 12 minutes to spare? Then this is The Late Late Show segment for you. James Corden, Emily Blunt, and Lin-Manuel Miranda perform a medley of 22 musicals in just one take. Don't cry for me, Argentina The truth is Watching them transition between show tunes, costumes, and even choreography is simply magical. From cabaret to Mamma Mia and everything in between, this sketch is pure joy. We especially love their throwback to Corden and Blunt's Into the Woods days, and, of course, the hilarious way they incorporate a plug for Mary Poppins Returns. No, no, Lynn. One never plugs one's own film. I would have hoped I taught you better. <laughs> James, plug it. Go on. Much like the beloved fictional nanny, this skit is practically perfect in every way. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. On the Street Where You Live, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, How Musical Theater Lovers Bond. All at once am I, several stories high. Wow, a trill as well. Something Stupid, The Late Late Show with James Corden. When these two get together, things always seem to get a little musical. I know I'd stand in line until you think you have the time to spend an evening with me. <laughs> A Patriotic Scare, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. How else would you celebrate becoming an American citizen? Yankee Doodle, keep it up, Yankee Doodle. <laughs> dream a Little Dream of Me, Popcorn with Peter Travers. We could easily listen to her sing the entire song. Birds singing in the sycamore tree. Dream a little dream of me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. A Cover Is Not The Book – Mary Poppins Returns Although this movie isn't a proper sequel to the 1964 Disney flick, it still had a huge legacy to live up to. Emily proved that she was up to the task with this fun dancehall-style number. Chapter titles are like signs, and if you read between the lines, you'll find your first impression was mistook. Oh, a cover is nice, but a cover is not the book. Much like Julie Andrews in supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, Blunt's charm, charisma, and spot-on comic timing have us beguiled. So in spring when Mr. Hickory saw her blossoms bloom in there, he took root despite her bark, and now there's seedlings everywhere! She transitions into a Cockney accent, possibly as a nod to her predecessor's famous Broadway role, and effortlessly nails the choreography. The song is incredibly catchy, and you just can't help but feel elated watching this joyous performance. Emily Blunt is a woman of many talents, and this number showcases many of them. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.